Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer. Buyers who need a jumbo loan are encountering difficulties in today's marketplace. Buyers are representing to sellers that they will go get a loan, which would be a jumbo loan, and put whatever percentage of money into the transaction that they're planning to put down. And when they go to make the actual loan application, they might have spoken to a lender, they might be qualified for the jumbo loan amount, but when they actually go make their loan application, they are discovering that the criteria for getting a jumbo loan has changed in recent years and even in recent months in some cases, and a well-qualified buyer still can't get a jumbo loan for a variety of reasons that may or may not make any sense. For example, in some cases, jumbo loan lenders won't allow um, self-employment income to count, or they won't allow a borrower who has too many mortgages already in place. So an investment buyer, for example, may not be able to get a jumbo loan. And there are criterias that limit the loan that a buyer of a certain price tag can get. And so the lender says to buyer, no worries. We're going to give you a conforming loan, and then we're going to give you a second loan, like maybe a line of credit, also secured by seller's property. And in essence, buyer, even though you represented to seller that you were going to put 25% down, for example, you're not going to have to put 25% down because we're going to give you this conforming loan and then you can borrow a lot more than what you had intended to borrow in the form of this second loan or line of credit secured by seller's house. And then, buyer, you get to preserve your cash resources for some other purpose. Makes sense. The only problem buyers, buyer brokers, is that on your Form 22A, you represented to seller that you were putting 20 or 25 percent down, meaning your own cash. And so now when you convert to this loan program that makes sense from the way the lender has pitched it, it's all of a sudden no longer conforming to what buyer told seller buyer was going to obtain in the form of a loan. And what's the significance of that? The significance of that is that buyer, if you don't go back and get seller's permission to change your loan type or the amount of down payment that you are going to use from your own cash resources, then buyers, you are voiding your financing contingency. You are waiving your financing contingency. Now, when I get a question like this, and, and I've given you a very specific set of facts, but, but imagine any scenario where buyer represents to seller that they're going to get a certain type of loan. Maybe they're going to get a conventional loan, and then they finally make the loan application after mutual acceptance, and lender says, buyer, you're not going to get a conventional loan, but maybe an FHA loan and they switch the buyer to the FHA loan, or vice versa. Buyer thinks they're going to get an FHA loan, and the lender switches them to a conventional loan. So whatever the set of facts might be, and I use the jumbo loan analogy to begin with because jumbo loans are creating this problem all across the state. Whenever we find ourselves in a situation where the buyer's Form 22A says the buyer is getting a particular type of loan or putting a particular amount down, and that doesn't end up being the loan product that the buyer actually seeks with their loan application, buyers, you have waived your financing contingency if you don't go back and get the seller's permission to switch the type of loan. If buyers and buyer brokers know going in to the negotiation what type of loan they're actually going to get, let's say they're going to get a conforming loan up to a certain amount and a second loan, then you would mark the boxes appropriately on the Form 22A to say that. Buyers actually only going to put maybe 5% of their own funds into it. They're going to get this conforming loan and then they're going to get a second loan for the difference. Fine. Put that on the financing contingency and let seller evaluate that. If buyers and buyer brokers don't know that going in, 
but you learn that after buyer makes loan application, then buyer and buyer broker, you have got to go back to the seller and get seller's permission or your financing contingency is voided. And here's one of the big problems that I am picking up on the hotline. When I hear from either buyer broker or listing broker on this topic, and I've heard a lot about this topic lately, this is an issue in our industry right now. When I hear about this topic, many times the brokers are critical of buyer's lender for not bringing this change in loan type to the broker's attention, whether it's the buyer broker or the listing broker. They're upset with the lender. But brokers, it's not the lender's responsibility. Lenders don't have the obligation to correct a misunderstanding for seller. Buyer, brokers, when you're representing your buyer, you do have a duty to take no action that's adverse or detrimental to the interests of the buyer in the transaction. Do you think that the buyer knows the boilerplate language of the forms well enough to know that if buyer makes loan application and makes what they think is a good decision based on what their lender has told them, but that it doesn't reflect what's on the financing contingency, that buyer is going to forfeit their financing contingency or waive their financing contingency if they don't have further discussion with a seller, buyer's not going to know that. Buyer brokers, you are the professionals. You are expected to know the boilerplate language of the forms well enough to know that if buyer switches the type of loan they're getting or offers to put or makes a loan application putting less down than what they'd represented to the seller, then buyers, they have to correct that misunderstanding with the seller or else they waive their financing contingency. The other component of that is that buyer brokers, you've got to know what type of loan your buyer actually applies for. It's not enough to just send the buyer out to apply for their loan and never talk to them again about it. Buyer brokers, you have to be aware of what the discussions are between the buyer and their lender so that you can help the buyer correct any misunderstanding on the Form 22A. To be very specific, when a buyer switches the type of loan they're getting or agrees to put less down than what they told the seller they were going to put down, they've got to get seller's permission. It does not have to be within the first five days of the transaction, but they've got to get seller's permission before they switch the loan type, before they agree to put less down, or they're going to waive their, <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to waive their financing contingency. If you have questions on this topic or any other, please send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.